All right, what's up, everybody? Uh, this is Jamal Johnson. Ain't been around for a minute. Been uh, digesting everything. But in the spirit of breaking silence, and also since it's just about the close of the 500th year of Martin Luther's historic 95 Theses, <clears throat> you know, that was 1517, right? Halloween. Um, I drafted 95 reasons why I am not a part of the so-called sanctuary. All right, first off, I don't have anything against anybody in sanctuary. Um, actually, love them all and wish the best for them all. I sincerely do. Um, I look at it this way. Conditions mean things, and um, the principle helps us figure out which conditions are more weighty than others. And um, so I know that I'm doing my best, and, you know, the people that are mentioned or implicated in anything called sanctuary are probably probably doing their best but that doesn't mean that i can abide everything that they do whether they're aware of what they do or uh unaware of what they do whether they're aware of their reasoning like where it comes from like what it's rooted in or where whether they're completely you know in a in a state of not even appreciating where the, the root of their reasoning comes from you know so um you know again i wish i wish the best for everybody but if there weren't issues then we'd probably still be cool and hanging out and some of these issues do pertain to uh the family federation because they have similar issues and sort of like religious institutions in general tend to have issues like these so this is not just about sanctuary this is about leaving the era of religion also so here here we go i'm about to start reason number one restoration era is over and no church, not the Sanctuary, the Family Federation, or the Unification Church, seemed interested in prepping people for that. Whether they are totally ignorant of it, it's not as if Father didn't say that restoration is over. It's just nobody decided to unpack and disseminate to members what it means that restoration is over. So it's like either something that flies over our head or just something that you know, we're not really dealing with. Um, that's a big problem because it means, that, uh, it, it means that the dynamics of restoration are still alive and kicking in people's minds. And the goodness of the new era can't uh, really flourish because uh, you know you'll find in the principle that it says when a new era comes along it ushers in new standards of goodness okay so the new standards of goodness aren't being dealt with because restoration isn't being set aside and unpacked for what it is um so you know there's no recognition or cognition of the fact that restoration was about separation from satan there's no recognition or cognition that restoration was to overturn the Satanic parents claim of parenthood. There's no recognition or cognition that restoration was about preparing ourselves individually for an untrodden path above the top of the growth stage. And there doesn't seem to any, be any cognition or recognition that restoration wasn't sufficient because there is a third stage, an untrodden path. There's no discussion of the third stage, an untrodden path. Uh, there's no cognition or recognition that, you know, the top of the growth stage has certain issues and there's no ministry alive to you know illuminate and navigate the specific issues at the top of the growth stage like people having a revelation that you are the lord um and being tempted to become antichrist the three temptations of jesus uh the issue of elder sonship um decentralization in that that's the time when adam was talking directly to god at the top of the growth stage um so this whole idea that each member is to be having a direct communication with God and communication with other entities other than God would be now relegated to some sort of secondary or tertiary status. All right, so restoration is over. Number two, the goals of restoration are being repeated. Um, that's because, you know, restoration is about restoring um, original nature. You know, foundation of substance is about restoring original nature. And that means we have to overcome the archangel and the archangel has this elitism. So it is a, a, a setting aside of elitism that really happens at the top of the growth stage. And elitists don't want restoration to die because elitism, ha elitism has a place within restoration, but elitism doesn't have any place above or after restoration, above the top of the growth stage, which means after restoration. So elitists don't want restoration to be over because they like it. You know, the whole concept of justification based on deeds, it's not central to the providence anymore. It was in the Old Testament era. The whole concept of justification based on faith and people's value and um, the, uh, the proof that one doesn't have fallen nature. Those things are important. 
but they're not central for God to be able to move forward. God has claimed more territory than that and doesn't need that as proof. In other words, you don't need to prove that you're this or that by being under an able figure anymore. Justification based on sacrificing one's Isaac. Outdated. Um, careerism, the idea that your value to heaven is going to grow like an angel's grows by climbing in a pyramid uh, through careerism, like an aggressive attack towards your career. That idea is of sort of like the Restoration Era, or uh, which is a, kind of like a repeat of angelic uh, imperatives, but it is not the true uh, nature of uh, restored humans. Um, outdated structures so that people can have something to climb up, or angelic-minded people, or meritocratic people have something to climb up. Those outdated structures are no longer central, okay? Providence. Number eight, sacrificing yourself, no longer central to providence. Uh, number nine, giving all things to Cain, no longer central to providence. Number ten, approval addiction is a false god. Now, seeking April's approval leads to and breeds approval addiction. So getting outside of the Cain Abel imperative of the old system would help you to also deal with any approval addiction not being dealt with uh, in the church. Uh, having or seeking power over others' minds is a false god. Like having actually power or even a fake authority over other people it does something for people who lust after some kind of sense for self-importance or finding out if they matter but actually leaving people to experience their own minds and freedom is good and that kind of lust to control people actually is um, anywhere from a soft tyranny to you know leading right into a, like a full complete tyranny uh, lusting after special privilege or to be near the so-called central person in the era after heaven the original dynamics uh, provide that everyone can be near God uh, it's called the direct dominion, and everyone can be near God. So the materialist or external view of being in some central location, like a palace near true parents, that is a physical location, and people closer to that location are do not do not have a greater value that people who are further away should lust after. Okay, that was number twelve. Number thirteen, there are some people in church organizations who are hardened against. Uh, the changing of the age from restoration age to post restoration. Why? Because they are used to the old era. It, it worked out for them, um, or you know they're, they're they're comfortable with it. The new era is scary. Hey, a really good book to read is Who Moved My Cheese. Check out that book. Okay, it's about you know getting over the fear of new things. Uh, number fourteen. Some people act to subvert the new era. That's what I feel was happening um, in the sanctuary. Um, I tried to stop it, and you know I could say I could talk more about that later. But basically, the story of 2017 in the Sanctuary Church was a story of an old era mindset fighting against um, the new era of liberation mindset. And um, basically, the old era assumes to uh, subordinate uh, others in a pyramid, and the liberation mindset says that's not necessary. And uh, so, you know, there are people who work to subvert the new era by saying that, uh, oh, you know, Jamal is wrong because he doesn't answer to anybody. There's, there's literally one guy, <laughs> Santa Claus, you know who you are, who said that, uh, you know, my problem is I don't answer to anybody. Well, that means this guy lusts after, you know, turning me into somebody's lackey. Not, a, not an era after the coming of heaven. Uh, type of thing. Um, people are afraid of change, uh, and the pastor in the church doesn't seem to understand that that's what he's, he's, he's dealing with, especially with these older older members who, you know, joined in the time when Father was actually in the John the Baptist position. A lot of people don't even know that, but it's in the principle that uh, once rejected, he would have to assume the role of John the Baptist, and he did, and they were used to attending Father as John the Baptist, and, you know, the pastor doesn't understand that he's trying to reason with people who are used to the John the Baptist version of Sun Myung Moon. Uh, if you want to talk about that, that's fine. Afraid of being meek. You know, when you can't climb a ladder, this is number 16, by the way. When you can't climb a ladder, um, or climb in a pyramid and seek that promotion, which makes you feel more important, then the alternative is to not climb and to be still. And a lot of times that is a very meek looking, from some people's point of view, a meek looking reality. For example, I say the highest thing that I could ever be is the sun husband and father of my children in a blessed family and that's exactly what I am which is why I can walk away from the sanctuary church I'm not afraid to be meek and I know there ain't a damn thing any of you can do 
you can go into the era of meekness kicking and screaming kicking and screaming but that's the future the meek shall inherit the earth and that's what it means people have to realize that the greatest thing that we ever got was to be righteously born as blessed children or blessed couples and to participate in the tradition of heaven which has everything to do with the four position foundation the relationship between god adam eve and children family true family um number 17 other members you have this elitist members i mentioned before right they're addicted to elitism but the other members are codependent they enable elitists because the other members aren't confident to stand on their own as sons and daughters of god and so they need approval and able figures are very willing to act as the agents of approval of heaven's approval so they're sort of locked in a marriage which is why i ain't trying to come back to the sanctuary church and break up that romance between the elitists and the enablers okay um y'all can have at it <laughs> but um you know i i don't want i don't want to deal with it you know there's no freedom in it and there's no truth in it um also you know there's an attitude of disdain both in the family federation and within the sanctuary church for true knowledge or knowledge and attitudes confident attitudes towards the knowledge that one holds for example i'm a very confident person about the things that i've worked out and that, that i know and you know even if you know there's a, a a member 20 years older than me who hasn't worked these things out or hasn't thought i'm going to speak as though i'm very clear when i'm clear and when i'm not clear it's my responsibility and i often do say oh no i don't understand that when i don't understand something i say i don't understand it and i don't have a problem with that i don't have to look important like as if i'm on top of things that i'm not on top of but i have worked out uh, uh, quite a few things compared to the a collective conversation of unificationists um i'm still asking my questions but I don't find that the conversation in the Unification church, church is helping me deal with my horizon because, you know, you guys are not talking the conversation. Um, let's see. That was, um, oh yeah, there was this one time where uh, the church administrator, he, he scoffed at my confidence in what I was talking about. And he told, he said, no one should be that confident, okay? This type of necessary ignorance, which is supposed to look like humility, is a ridiculous, ridiculous hindrance to children of God um, actually having dominion over the angelic world because you can't have dominion over the angelic world without, uh, without, with, with a lack of certainty. You can't, and, and I'll talk about that later. Um, so because there's a disdain about, this is number 19, because there's a disdain for knowledge, it leaves open the idea, or well, it leaves open the possibility that leaders are gonna make up doctrines. They're gonna make it up, and they're gonna go unchecked with making up those doctrines because members don't have knowledge. Now. Being, I consider myself a pretty knowledgeable person, but, you know, being around cooking him, for example, that guy just makes up shit, okay? Like, everybody knows that the Holy Spirit is said in the divine principle as being female. No reason, no, no, why have an axe to grind with the divine principle? Give it up, okay? Um, also, you know, rod of iron. Let's face it, the principle says the rod of iron is the word from his mouth. Why have an axe to grind over it? Um, the Constitution. Father already made a constitution, okay? Um, the idea that uh, the kingdom of heaven is going to have prostitutes, assassins, and, 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 and Satan worshippers. Totally made up. Not supported by Father. The idea that uh, Hyung Jin is the only person that God sees. Totally made up. It's, it's, it's totally outside the concept of kingship that true Father created. But unless you are proud of the knowledge that you've worked out, you just accept it. And, you know, I had to really repent. I think the only thing I was doing was giving... Uh, these two brothers a chance because of my, 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 my love and respect for Father. I want them to, to succeed. I still do. And so every time Coach Chinin would float something, I would just go, mm, yeah, yeah, let's, let's chew on that. Yeah, let's see. You know, but I'm ashamed of myself for not being able to catch some of this stuff. And, uh, you know, I thought, eh, why grind, why, 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 why grind an axe over, over that, you know? But anyway, this is the type of thing that can, can flourish when the members think that knowledge is uh, sort of arrogant or um, archangelic itself. I mean, the, the divine principle says that uh, <laughs> that we have to overcome ignorance. It's the very first concept that overcoming ignorance is going to help us fulfill our true heart's desire. It's an introduction to the principle. Number 20. Um, officials assume that I fit into their dysfunctional paradigm. Um, if I am of the fourth Adam's era, which is an era of liberation, people who are subdued by hierarchy and who only see hierarchy as 
you know, the, the total reality. Then they see liberated people as being out of place. Okay? It's the nature of the third Adam's realm to be offended by the liberated people of the fourth Adam's realm. It was the nature of Israel to be offended by Jesus who defied their notion of the Sabbath or sin or, 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 or any of that. He was too free for them. Um, so I left because I felt spiritually molested by these people who wanted with every breath to stick me into a fucking structure. And I'm looking at them like, damn, you don't really, you really don't know the new mathematics. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, another reason why I left was because the matching of my firstborn child was held up. Uh, it was held up as if it might be turned into a political football in order to make me, quote unquote, play nice or to sort of uh, tame me um, as if I was some sort of unbridled uh, quantity that needed to be uh, tamed or contained. Um, again, I would have been contained into a restoration age type structure and um, I would have to forfeit uh, a lot of the qualities that come along with my free will and free thinking and my understanding of what's going on you know um, so yeah the idea that um, you know uh, the, the blessing the central tradition of, of my heart of my children's heart which we inherited from God uh, was gonna be turned into you know a, a political play uh, oh that, that that was offensive that was that was offensive that was offensive um, Number 22, conscience is higher than God. I had to exert um, my conscience, even though people like Doug felt that the practice of conscience uh, must come second because, um, you know, he was overheard saying that, uh, you know, no one can control Jamal as if that was a problem. Uh, you know, like he, he had some kind of lust, uh, burning desire to actually, to actually control me. Okay, I mean, dude, <laughs> there was 400 years of slavery. Okay, and I'm like the only prominent black male in or in an organization or in and around the organization, and you fucking Santa Claus want to fucking uh, subdue me for what? For what? To uh, tip the hat again to a defunct era? See, you 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 want something that's not good for you to want because you still adhere to an old era. I don't know. Moving right along. Um. So, 23. I'm seen as a bad cane from that perspective. From the perspective of restoration, I'm seen as a bad cane. From the perspective, this is 24, from the perspective of Asian etiquette, I'm seen as a bad Westerner, okay? Or a person who doesn't understand the external, the external vertical tradition of, um, you know, Asian, I don't know, ass kissing, right? Nah, so I'm seen as bad. Um, I'm seen as bad according to humanism. You know, even Richard got up and talking more about like the language that I use than the fact that the public official, Lord of Schwartz, was abusing her position. Okay, so me using language was more egregious, okay, to uh, his, his type of humanism. Uh, the fact that he would do that is offensive. I started losing respect for him uh, for that. Um, I'm seen as bad according to medieval feudalist etiquette okay so since they made Hyunjin him a king by putting a fourth crown on him in uh, 2015 I'm supposed to act like a subject a loyal subject a role that you know isn't discussed uh, in and around the, the matter of the four position foundation in other words it is not central to heaven to exercise and perfect this type of etiquette in other words if I'm being tried according to restoration Asian etiquette humanism or medieval feudalist etiquette, uh, I, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. But that guilt is irrelevant because we're not in the Restoration Era. I'm not Asian. And Asia isn't the center of the cosmos. And uh, humanism, it fucking sucks. <laughs> like, it's like humanism is, is, is the harlot. Humanism is, you know, the flip side of uh, relativism. Uh, I'm seen as bad uh, medieval feudalism. Okay, we're not in some fucking Camelot. Okay, you're not in fucking Camelot. You understand? Uh, if Adam hadn't fallen, would he have created a Camelot? No. Would he have stood in between 
God and all his children. No, all of his children, once they are fully, fully grown, would have their personal relationship with God. Adam wouldn't stand in between. Neither did True Father. That's why True Father said, conscience is higher than parents and higher than God even. Okay? But a lot of people are not dealing with that either. Okay? But I am. And, okay. <clears throat> Number 27. The leadership structure of Family Federation, of both churches, ever since I joined this, this church, is offended by the realm of Fourth Adam and Fourth Adamism. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Some people think that Fourth Adam is just some claim that H1 was making. It's not. It, it means that we're born from true parents and then we know who we are. Okay? And that we believe that we're born from true parents and all that that means, the full inheritance, which includes our freedom. So if you don't see yourself as free, free enough to defy fucking Doug and everybody over there, if you're not free enough to defy something that, that, that's wrong, then you don't understand uh, the inheritance of the children of Adam. We've inherited that freedom. And I'm not talking about the freedom to do dirt. I'm talking about the freedom to defy those who have positions or, or false truths, okay? The freedom to walk away. The freedom to know that I've been given enough that I want for nothing so I can walk away. I, I have inherited that. And so the ability of me to walk away flies in the face of people who are trying to use me as a brick in the pyramid. Oh, you could look at me as a, oh, just the prettiest brick. You want to, you know, build a wall out of me and my friends for your structure. But your structure is not the cosmos and it's not the center of the providence anymore. It's just your small-minded lust, okay? And it's not everything. And people who see outside of that box are offensive to you because we're not interested in helping you build that shit. Okay. Again, I really do wish the best for you, but and I don't mean to be offensive when I'm cursing, it's just, this is, this is and has always been my way of communicating that I'm not moving on, on this particular point. You know, it's like, I, I've, I've, I've thought about it enough, okay? Um, I project certainty with uh, curse words, so. Just so you know, it's not, it's not to belittle you or anything. It never was. Um, but it, you know, is meant to be dismissive. I am clearly saying that I've made up my mind about what I'm dismissive about. Like, it's not up for debate, really. So if, I, if I'm saying it's fucking shit, it's not like you're going to like open me up to debate over it and you're the one that needs to find out at that point. But I don't curse about everything because some things I'm not certain about. Okay, so reason number 28, people like Doug and Carrie, um, Lourdes, Jerry, people, they, you know, many of them were offended by, you know, my stance as a free person. <laughs> Young and him couldn't diagnose where their lust come from. Okay, and I mentioned it earlier. Their lust come because they have unfinished business with the restoration era and they are dying to complete it, which means everybody's got to play restoration game. And if you don't want to play the game, you're evil. So Hyung Jin's totally unable to diagnose that. And I don't want to be subject to his inability to, you know, understand who he's dealing with. Um, Hyung Jin failed to correct his staff or regulate his organization in light of the fact that it had a lot of restoration age uh, sympathizers in it. Um, 30. Kyung Jin instigated a formal complaint, actually. When I uh, made a formal complaint against uh, Lourdes, actually, Kyung Jin instigated that because there was a brother who um, put forward a, uh, a formal complaint, and Kyung Jin said, hey, if more people, you know, do this formal complaint style, Kyung Jin would have to take notice. Okay. This open that, that, was, that was reason number 30. Okay. Kyung Jin never admitted that it was his suggestion that formal complaints be uh, filed. He, 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 pe 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 people were left to think that I came up with that craziness myself. And I, I don't appreciate that. Of course, you know, he was probably just going to say he doesn't remember. And I'm okay with that because he's not, he's not, he, he didn't give birth to me. And um, I don't, I don't, I don't mind him making mistakes. I, I don't, you know, I don't actually really have a problem with having a relationship with the guy. But I can't support his view of who he thinks he is because that necessitates diminishing myself chew on that for a little while but if the formal complaint was necessary in order to reach Cook Chinim, then Hyung Jinim was letting on that Cook Chinim is the reason why um, uh, Hyung Jinim wouldn't regulate his own staff okay and so he deferred to Cook Chinim and we started wondering I started wondering well how much power how often does Hyung Jinim defer to Cook Chinim? how much power does Cook Chinim have in these matters and other matters. Who, who knows? But it's the first time I realized that Young Jim's not going to do what he thinks should be done because Kuchinim thinks differently. Okay, fine. Uh, Kuchinim would refuse to reprimand uh, these members or regulate them in any way. 
or let it be known publicly that this person, uh, L. Schwartz, was regulated in any way. Um, there was no accountability to the public that they claimed to serve, that she was being dealt with. And he said it was poor business sense to do so. In other words, business principles were in a subject position and spiritual principles um, were in an object position. The principles that the children of God, not workers in the organization, are in the subject position. That is a necessary spiritual principle. But good business practices took precedence over maintaining the supremacy of God's children. And so since that's what's running Kuchinim's mind, and since Hyungjinim was deferring Kuchinim, then uh, that's what's running Hyungjinim's mind ultimately. Business judgment, that's 32. Number 33, following Kuchin left Hyungjin in a state of negligence. So the act of following Kuchinim was negligent on Hyungjinim's part um, because Kuchinim didn't, uh, didn't uh, provide for the satisfaction of Hyungjinim's principles, or his stated principles. In other words, if Hyungjinim said that members uh, were in a subject position and church officials were in a serving position and is powerless to actually make decisions as if that's a reality, then um, he didn't go back and retain his pr prerogative uh, once Kuchinim set set it aside. If, it's, if Kuchinim could just tell Hyungjinim to set aside his prerogative when Kuchinim decides, then it's an act of negligence on Hyungjinim's part. He's neglecting his own principles and he's neglecting the people who had come to believe in those stated principles. You know, people like me. So, 34. Kuchinim feared that a reprisal from Lord Schwartz was going to damage the organization. This was told to me by the church administrator who asked Kuchinim to give her a leave of absence. Kuchinim said he didn't want to mess with her because she may damage the organization if she felt offended. That means that he's dominated by her. So if Young Jim's deferring to him and he's dominated by business principles and his business principles won't let Lord Schwartz threaten the organization or the business, then it means that behind everything, the spirit behind Young Jim driving his decisions is the prerogative of Lord Schwartz. Wrap your mind around that, but it's pretty fucking sound. If one guy is afraid that the other guy isn't gonna like what he said, uh, and the other guy's afraid that Lordish is gonna, you know, rise up against the organization or punish the organization, then basically nobody has any balls enough to regulate her. And that's exactly what happened. Nobody, nobody, um, nobody issued any kind of statement that corrective measures were taken against her. There was no uh, sense that, you know, anything like that needed to be done. Uh, I'm okay with it. I'm just saying that. Hey, if you said this your stated principles and you can't exercise your stated principles, I, I forget about how I feel about it. I don't, I don't even care. I could, I could, I could digest Lord all on my own. I didn't need to file anything. You said that it would be, it'd be good to file, right? So, but if you state that you believe that church officials should be in a servant position and you can't regulate that because you deferred Cookson, okay, you gotta see the math. Thirty-five. If Cookson was secretly subject over Hyungjin while Cookson was the object partner of a looming threat from Lord's, then. Lord Schwartz was actually the remote subject of Hyungjin. Okay. 36. Kuchinim floated the idea that the kingdom needs prostitutes and assassins. Where in the Bible or in Father's words can you find Father saying that the kingdom needs prostitutes and assassins? Nowhere. Um, 37. Lord Schwartz was increasingly aided by church officials. Uh, they warped public perception about the court case. In other words, they tried to say that it was a sibling conflict or um, that it was a matter of uh, me having foul language and this kind of thing, me being, you know, uncouth, a matter of, you know, this rude guy. Um, also, they didn't want to depict that it was a public official versus a citizen of Channel Gook. They tried to equate us by calling us uh, both citizens. They tried to equate us by saying that we're brothers and sisters. Listen, if we were brothers and sisters, I would have never filed. Who the hell files against their sister? Stupid. Okay? You act like there's no context for the filing. Okay? That's, I'm not stupid. You never thought I was stupid. I know that. What you tried to do, though, is change the conversation in, a, in, a, in and among a circle of people who you actually don't respect their intelligence but you respect my intelligence and you know I wasn't gonna go for that so the only thing is get me out of there really push me out because if I'm there you know I'm gonna say some shit that's real clear and everybody can see what's what doesn't make any logical sense that this was brother versus sister none but if it is brother versus sister then her forgiveness is foregone conclusion and then there's something wrong with me for not issuing 
that forgiveness. Of course. But it wasn't brother versus sister. It was within the context that Hyunjin set, uh, uh, set up. Wherein, I'm a citizen. Uh, obviously, I was molested, spiritually molested by Lord's antics, which I could have forgiven her for. I had forgiven her six or seven times earlier for similar stuff. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to take Hyunjin Im's words seriously. If he really wanted to make an organization that, that held the citizen above the, um, the public servant, I was going to exercise that. And that's a big part of my character. I want to exercise the privileges that I have. So, 37, it, again, that's Lordis friends in an attempt to circle the wagons, tried to change the nature of the filing. Okay, and making it brother versus sister instead of citizen versus public official. That was underhanded, dirty, and people who aren't, you know, thinkers, you put a fast one over on them, but not me. Okay, I saw that shit. I'm like... Nice, nice. Yeah, really, really upstanding. Okay. Um, the next thing, Tim threw Chunogook under the bus. Just when it seemed that Lourdes was not going to be able to avoid the spectacle of court. Her friend, I didn't know that he cared so much for her until this moment. He decides to run cover for her. Now, my understanding of Tim is that he doesn't do stuff like this by himself. He is the lackey of Kuchinen. He kisses Kuchinen's ass. Okay. So... You know, right now I started thinking, is it Kuchinen who's telling these people to do this? I still think that. It's just the nature of Kuchinen, uh, excuse me, the nature of Tim, that he wants to, you know, do whatever Kuchinen says. You know, no matter what. I'm like, dude, no matter what, what if he's as fucked up as the other two children? You're going to, like, do what he says? Okay, you ain't got your own fucking conscience and shit? So this guy is throwing Channel Gook under the bus at a time when Lorda Schwartz is trying to run for cover and she can't. Okay? She's really narcissistic and only the spectacle of, you know, her having to answer why she did this and did that may put a dent in it. And she's going to get saved from it because what, what did he do? Well, Tim says, there is no channel cook, so the court is uh, totally unnecessary. So, uh, Lorda Schwartz uh, denies that she is a citizen of channel cook because channel cook doesn't exist. The idea that channel cook doesn't exist uh, for her to assert that she can't possibly be a citizen and she's going to avoid the court because she's not a citizen, right? Uh, that environment, that, that uh, context was created by Tim. Tim created a hiding place for Lourdes. And so she denied being a citizen. And so the first attempt to do court was thwarted because Tim furnished this new idea that Chano Guk <laughs> did not exist. So he threw Chano Guk under the bus and he provided cover for Lourdes Schwartz by doing so. Uh, Tim caused, even at that time, this is number 40, Tim caused Hyungjinim to uh, trash trash that's the word he caused young to trash young condition i don't know if you remember but starting from march what was it march march 13th yeah march 13th of 2016 young Jinim was doing a condition of preaching the kingdom using every verse from the new testament that had the word kingdom in it and he was working one by one through the entire new testament well that condition was about to be completed the following week and with a week or two left to go tim has this argument breaks into Hyung Jin conscious mind and forces Hyung Jin to admit <laughs> that Chono Guk does not exist. And uh, what was it? July 28th, 2017, on his King's Report show, because uh, uh, Tim had argued with him the day before, Hyung Jin is admitting that the kingdom doesn't exist. And he even says uh, that there's no properly installed king or whatever. I mean, his words. Why? Because the remote reason why um, Tim is taking the stand is to create cover for Lourdes Schwartz. So he not only has to throw the kingdom under the bus in order to protect Lourdes. He, the, a, 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 another consequence is that the rationale actually had an effect on Hyung Jinim and caused him to recant, you know, his intended, uh, his intentions for the uh, year and a half long condition he was doing, which is to, to preach the kingdom. And then at the end, he says there is no kingdom because of Tim. So I'm sitting there watching this and I'm like, these motherfuckers are lightweights. They, they, they can fuck up anything under pressure. You know, it was, it was absolutely ridiculous. You know, um, so Lourdes, uh, so Lourdes escaped court. That's number 41 because Tim provided her cover. Number 42, uh, Hyung Jim wrote to me and chastised me in writing for suggesting that Tim and or the World Mission Department should be, um, should be sued by me because Lourdes is a foreign national now. She's not a citizen. She's a foreign national. And this organization hired a foreign national that turned 
uh, that, that had spiritually molested me. And somebody's got to answer answer for it. So then on August 24th, Hyungjin, you know, used his uh, platform to chastise me, but then realized I don't have anti-hierarchy intentions. So, um, but it was his way of kind of barking me off the proposition of, hey, if I can't sue Lourdes because she's not even a citizen, well, what the heck, who, who's responsible for me being molested by this public official then? I can't, I'm, he, he's obviously saying in his August 24th uh, King's report that he doesn't want me to deal with it that way. Okay. So, um, that's number 42 though, because uh, he, he, he didn't leave me a, a, a recourse at that time. Uh, so another court was drafted called the Voluntary Court, which is actually a fake recourse because Chun Guk is not voluntary. You know, uh, so the, the whole notion of a voluntary court means that anybody can get into, uh, you know, Chun Guk or avail themselves the privileges of Chun Guk uh, through their own volunteerism. So, but, um, so this whole notion of a voluntary court insults the, the nature of a uh, citizen of Chun Guk. We are citizens by righteous birth. Um, Okay, we come in through the way of the tree of life, the blessed and or true family, and through no other way. And so Lourdes is going to avail herself of privileges of the kingdom after denying her own citizenship. This is foolishness on the part of the people who proposed the voluntary court, and it's foolishness on my part for participating in it, for not catching earlier the nature of the, the, the word voluntary court. Um, so that was silly. Nobody addressed that. Um, in my uh, document to drop the case, I did, but nobody cared about it. Uh, during the voluntary court, Jim Bohr put a gag order on me because I don't have rights, I guess, because if I put myself in the realm with a non-citizen, then I'm also agreeing that I don't have rights. But he put a gag order on me. It was, you know, unconstitutional. But if you ask the guy, he told me two times why he did it. He did it to force me to come into court. In other words, the gag order itself was there to irritate me into uh, seeking relief by coming into court. In other words, he stripped me of my rights in order to cause me to relate with the court in a specific way, that I'd be coming to court to get my rights back. That's not the right way for a citizen to approach court. I'm going to go to court to get my rights back from the court. The first act of going into any kind of, you know, kingdom of heaven so-called court, I'm going to go there to get my rights back. Well, I didn't want that to become history, so I, uh, that becomes another reason why I'm going to drop the case, because I'm not going to court to get my rights back. The judge has to realize that it was wrong for him to do that and then we can commence with court. He wouldn't do that, so I dropped the case. I wasn't going to legitimize the environment at all. You got to understand this. I wasn't going to legitimize the environment at all. There's no way I was going to legitimize the idea that court, from that day forward, was a, pl was a place that could strip people of their rights and cause people to come into court for the purpose of regaining their rights. I would be going to court to regain my rights first and foremost, and that means that I would have to adopt the frame of mind that my rights were taken. So I decided to not legitimize that foolish court. Okay? That's why I dropped the case. Now, the court set itself up as a problem instead of Lord of Schwartz. In other words, it ran interference for Lord of Schwartz. So, 44, Jim Boer placed a gag order on both parties. 45, Jim admitted that he did it to cause people to do something. 46, Richard attempted to bait me, Richard Panzer, the, the very week that the gag order came down, Richard doesn't ever really talk to me. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't like little people. I don't. I, I work for the guy. I used to work for the guy. I don't know why. I didn't really care. But it's very conspicuous when that guy comes over and talks to me because he never does that. He never initiates. You know, as far as he's concerned, you know, he doesn't necessarily need me. I got you, Richard. I understand. But the, and I've known that for years. Okay. But um, the idea that he wants to come over and talk to me about the case, um, the the very week that a gag order went down, dude. You were, you, were, you were straight, you, you think I'm a fucking lightweight, bro. <laughs> the, the idea, come on. So you, you were doing nothing short of trying to bait me into breaking the gag order. So I had to remind you two weeks in a row, because you tried to get me to talk about it two weeks in a row. Um, and I had to remind you that there was this gag order and I can't talk about the case. I just, I, so, but the idea that you, you, you did this, I kept a mental note of that, brother. Um, 47. Richard attempted to confuse the case with the issue of rough language. I talked about that before. Uh, 48. Hyungjin was unwilling to use his own supposed office to protect the supposed citizen. So, he said that, you know, Hyungjin had asked me to file on behalf of the children of God a complaint against Hak Chahan, which I did. I now regret it because the Constitution is shit. Um, but uh, I did it because he asked me. In the week leading up to 923, I said, could you have this crazy judge lift this gag order, which is unconstitutional, because you're going to have me go in and file a complaint as a person 
that has currently has a gag order on, under them. Okay, it's it's funny the way things work, you know, because um, you know, I hereby drop those those charges against Hak Jahan because the Constitution is bullshit, by the way. Um, so um, I dropped them, not because Hak Jahan is an angel and didn't actually change father's tradition. She did wrongly change father's tradition and some other things, but using the Constitution is wrong. It's wrong to use that Constitution because that Constitution denies the existence of Chunnel Gook. And by denying the existence of Chunnel Gook and suspending it to some time in the future, it has suspended everybody's rights as citizens of Chunnel Gook. <clears throat> and that's exactly the way the court treated me as a person whose rights were suspended. So it's funny the way the spirit world works because the court acted in exactly the way that the document is written. It is written in a way so as to suspend Chunnel Gook till sometime in the future and suspend our rights as citizens till that time in the future, which is to rob us currently, citizens of Chunnel Gook, who live in Chunnel Gook right now, of our rights right now. And that's exactly when, in practice, that court tried to do. Jim might say that, you know, he had some stupid little reason, you know, one way or the other. Spirit world is spirit world. The nature of the Constitution was was um you know basically doing its thing you it, it's the nature of the, that constitution so because that constitution is like that i drop those charges and yes on behalf of all citizens of general Gook, i drop those charges against hot jahan um you know god can deal with her for father can deal with her okay and we each can ignore the things that she says that are unprincipled but uh, Hyung Jin had asked me to drop those charges, no, to, to, to file those charges. And I said, yeah, but you're going to have this representative of all the citizens being under a gag order. So <laughs> that means he's complicit through, you know, in uh, having a representative of all the citizens uh, under a gag order, which means he doesn't mind if all the citizens are under a gag order. You know, and I would say that, you know, not wanting people to talk is a repeating theme in this regime. Okay. Uh, so it started with uh, Lourdes spiritually molesting me because she didn't like the way I talk. And, you know, I'll continue. Um, anyway, Hyung Jim did not lift that gag order. He didn't, he didn't cause uh, Jim to lift that gag order. And Jim refused to lift the gag order on anybody's say so. He insisted that I come into court, legitimize the court, and then go do 923. I was not going to legitimize the court or the, 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 the idea that citizens have to go to court to get their rights. That's why I was not going to go to court. Nobody knew that at the time, but that's why I was not going to go to court under those pretenses. Okay, I rejected the premise completely. So um, the court itself is it, shit. Okay, I'm the child of God. It is my belief that breathes life into things. Okay, and so I was not going to breathe life into bullshit. So can you imagine every citizen would be expected to come to court because the first citizen decided to do it who, who dealt with court? The first citizen had to go to court to get his rights? You motherfuckers must be out your fucking mind. Out your fucking mind. Or... You know what? Maybe you're out to lunch and you just weren't paying attention. I can see that. I, I, I can see that. But Satan was having a fucking field day testing me while you motherfuckers were out to lunch if that's the case. Okay? And everybody ought to be grateful that I didn't go to court under those pretenses. Because if I'm a representative citizen and I, and I submitted to such a thing, oh my God. I was very worried about every other citizen. And I knew that what I did would set a precedent, not in, in the legal system, but as a condition in the cosmos. So I didn't go to court, and I dropped that fucking case, okay? And I'm dropping the case against Hak Jahan. So after I dropped the case, they tried to offer me a job. I was, you know, up until that moment, volunteering uh, my, my, my time, and, um, you know, to be a youth pastor. So I was volunteering my time, and so they wanted me to work. Now, I would be, my salary would be tied to Cook Chinim. I don't want to be tied to Cook Chinim. I don't want to be subdued by Cook Chinim at all at this point, because Cook Chinim has you know, people on his payroll who are willing to place gag orders on, on citizens and deny the existence of Chunnel Gook. I'm like, those people must not be free. Um, and, 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 and I don't want to become one of them just because, you know, my family's food that I put in their mouths is tied to cooking them say so. So get the fuck out of here. There's no way I was going to go to work at the church. The second thing is, I'm going to go to work and I'm going to become now a public official. When the issue between uh, Lourdes and myself was never, it was never brother on brother, sister on sister, public official versus public official. It was citizen versus public official. So you're going to turn it into a citizen, a public official versus public official spectacle. And people won't remember that I was volunteering back when I started the, the formal complaint, right? So I saw through that. Yeah. Um, so, um, but the fact that, you know, you tried to uh, tempt me into uh, being financially dependent on you. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here.
And then one of the most egregious things wh why you know I can't I can't fuck with Sanctuary Church is because Richard, two or three days before this meeting about me uh, working at the church, he cuts my salary in half. Okay, over some bullshit. Because after I rejected the um, the the offer of the church, he reinstated my full salary. But let's just say it's uh, strangely coincidental that a guy who works on Cookson's payroll in the church. Uh, decides that he's going to use his uh, role as the president of free teens to sort of prep me by cutting my salary for um, you know uh, taking a job at the church which would have subordinated me to cooking in, 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 in more in additional ways so honestly speaking I didn't think that Dr. Panzer made that decision and that that timing was coincidental that's why I decided not to hurt free teens but to leave free teens. And so I finished out that year and I, I, I had planned to from October, from October 2017, I had planned to leave free teens. Cause I didn't tell Richard that because you know what? I was in a, a vulnerable position with that fool. Okay. So, you know, I bided my time, set something else up, tried not to fuck his organization in the process. I didn't want his organization to suffer because of his stupidity. And I didn't want his organization to suffer because of his ass kissing in front of Cook Um So yeah, uh, basically you know the fact that it's not a coincidence that he cut my salary in half right before they were going to offer me a job at the church a job that I was not inclined to take and a job that would have made the spectacle Lourdes John Johnson versus Lourdes a public official versus public official number 51 so at the meeting to discuss whether or not I come to work at the church um, Cook Jinem presumed to speak for Hyung Jin um, I won't go into the details but I felt it necessary that when the question placed on the table by me was directed at Hyungjin, that Cook Jin tried to answer the question three times, and Hyungjin was not allowed to speak for himself. I felt it necessary to remind Cook Jin that he's not Hyungjin, and at the time, you know, because I bought into this, you know, special uh, king bullshit. Um, I'll just leave it right there because I because I bought in. I said I told him you're not the king, right? So, actually. If you're going to call him the king, we're all kings, right? Um, because uh, three kingships means Heavenly Father, true parents, and myself. That's what the divine principle, that's what the Chang Sung Gyeong says about 28 times. The Chang Sung Gyeong does not say 28 times that three kingships, the three kingships that we pledge in the pledge, the eight pledges, the eight family, Kajong Ming say, okay, is not true father, Hyung Jin, and Shin Jun, okay? That is, okay, so anyway, at the time I was telling Kuchin, you're not the king. The dude didn't want to stop speaking on Hyung Jin's behalf. And it gave me a clue into the fact that shit, he does this all the time. Hyung Jin lets Kuch Jin speak for him all the fucking time. And so I turned to Hyung Jin about the fourth time that Kuch Jin was buttoned in, answering the question uh, on Hyung Jin's behalf. And I said to him, I said, if this guy doesn't like what you are going to put down and he leaves his position, that's his responsibility. Why? Because in the classic Cain Abel struggle, you have a subject and an object, just like where you have parents and children, uh, father, uh, husband and wife. If the subject has to take a stand for some vertical concept that the object doesn't understand, the subject in a free world cannot make the object do the object's part, right? So if Hyung Jin cannot make Kuk Jin -im do his part, you do not forfeit the vertical or do not forfeit the principle that the, sub the, that the subject partner is trying to take a stand for. But it seems that if the subject, in this case Hyung Jin -im, is afraid that Kuk Jin is not going to go along with something, I felt the need to tell him that in that case, let Kuk Jin -im do his worst. Let him leave. Let him disunite. You can't, you can't bend the vertical in the fear that the object's not going to follow and maintain his object position. So if you are, if you do, if you change the vertical or ignore the vertical because you're afraid of any threat coming at you on the part of the, from the direction of the object, then that is classic reversal of dominion. The fuck you want me to say? It actually is. You don't like it, but it actually is. So you know, you know, me and Robert used to say years ago, back in 2014 or 15, that you know one day there's gonna be a reckoning between these two brothers, where Hyung Jin, in order to really uh, be in his position, is going to have to fucking piss Cook Jin off. You know, and it's gonna have to tell him, yo, if if if, if it's the, if it's gotta be your way, then I don't need you. And then Cook Jin is gonna have to uh, stay in his position. Okay, in order to actually resolve the Cain Abel problem that Father said that Hyung Jin would have to face, that's the way that shit's gonna go. You know, so trying to give everything to Cook Jin, you're giving the kingdom back to 
you know, the more external look. Young Jim is the more internal brother. He's the guy who's on the cusp of understanding Fourth Adam and trying to liberate everybody. Being pulled back from that by Cook Jim, who refuses to wear a crown and only wants to see Young Jim as the sole monarch. So it's a struggle between their two opinions. Seems like Cook Jim's winning because Young Jim starts bossing people around after a while. You know, so it's a struggle between his cane type view and his ape type view. Anyway, the fuck you gonna do about the fact that that's my opinion? Nothing. <laughs> that's right. Anyway, um, so 52. The church educator, Mrs. Claus, called me a terrorist. I don't know why this woman got to call me a terrorist. I didn't do a fucking thing to that woman except refuse to talk to her because she only wants to see me in the light that she wants to see me in. That's the only thing I did to her. The other thing is I refused to have give and take with her after she tried to basically um, keep me from having a one-on-one -on -one moment with Hyungjin. I mean, she want, it seemed like she wanted to stop me from having this one-on-one -on -one moment with Hyungjin this one time. More than I wanted to have that moment. You know, but it was very conspicuous how hard she tried to to to, to stop me from having this one on one moment with Hyungjin, man. You know, I, I told her about it and, you know, Call, call me a terrorist. I could call you out your name. Anyway, 53. Richard was gleeful that the case was dropped. I never saw Richard so happy that I dropped the case. Um, it didn't really fit in an organization where the leader of the organization said that he was proud that the organization could put on a, a spectacle uh, demonstrating jurisprudence. So Richard was so gleeful. He came over and put his hand on my shoulder. I don't know whether he thought that that was going to rub it in or whatever. But can you imagine? You're the president of this church. And you're happy that I dropped the case against the public official. Gleeful. Like uncontrollably gleeful. And I couldn't smile with the guy. I'm like, they have no idea what they're doing to the citizen. Okay? Totally disconnected from the citizen. And happy that the citizen seemingly submitted. <laughs> Fucking heartbreaking. Mrs. Claus was more concerned that after I dropped the case, I was, I was be unleashed verbally on the internet and just start blabbing. She was, so she was more concerned about PR than the fact that justice wasn't, was or was not served. That's, that's reason number 54 that, you know, I, I can't hang with these motherfuckers. Okay. Okay. Church security, uh, Santa Claus, he likened me to John Walker. Now, this goes back to my earlier points, you know, around one through six, points one through six, about people not understanding that restoration is over. And they don't understand the top of the growth stage. At the top of the growth stage, people have the, the problem of you are the Lord, and they m make themselves into an antichrist. Now, how do I know that? Because I've been dealing with this for 20 years. Because a guy who knows that the church era is over for 20 years uh, knows that when you go beyond the church era, people want to create like alternate authorities. Okay, And they get tempted, this is in chapter 5, by the idea that they're the center of a new providence. So, I know about that problem, uh, and I am not... Um, having that problem but the problem is if you're afraid to go beyond the church era and you've been burned by John Walker types you just assume that everybody that wants to go outside of the church wants to create an alternate authority okay so I understand where that comes from like if everybody that had the you are the Lord revelation took it the wrong way you want to stop it altogether which is unprincipled because that means you don't want anybody to go above the top of the growth stage by dealing with that uh, revelation properly which is as the principle suggests that when we get that revelation, we should know that we are being encouraged by heaven, that we are the best suited for our area. Okay? Now, I'm not John Walker, but the fact that the head of security was going to treat me like this type of, like I was this type of spiritual threat. <laughs> People are fucking ridiculous, man. Um, 56. Doug told Gideon, uh, excuse me, Santa Claus told Gideon that I used my track record as an effective youth educator to shield me or to make me untouchable. So, shield me against what? I'll tell you what. Shield me against the fact that he can't control me. That he can't put his hands on me. Okay? Um, he was trying to crack this nut. Trying to figure out how to manipulate me. How to force some issue one way or another with me. And he couldn't figure it out. And he thought that, you know, my record as an effective youth educator was in the way. Like, how are you going to bring down a regulated guy who's doing a good job? Damn, he's got to really figure this out. How can, I use, how can I get Jamal if everybody knows him as being effective with the youth? Damn. So instead of his sympathies going with the need that the church has to have its youth understand who they are, he looks right past that as, some, as an obstacle. And he, 
he has to uh, he has to exercise his elitist mind where I'm concerned and that's more important to him than whether or not the church community is getting an effective youth pastor and he tells my, my assistant who is over the 20 somethings that I'm the guy having a spiritual problem and I'm the guy who um, you know is just using the hype of me being an effective youth pastor to shield myself from a, from his reckoning yeah well listen I've seen this before I've seen this before it's a, it's a, it's a lust that is a bleed over from the restoration era where people didn't climb high enough in the organizations they used to populate back then and they still have these political ambitions and they want to turn the realm of free people into organizations again so they can play climb the pyramid and ladders okay again they want to play fucking spiritual shoots and ladders and shit <laughs> and obviously it's destructive because the lust to climb the structure is so strong that you will throw probably the most effective youth educator that you know that all these parents know under the fucking bus just so that you can fucking play shoots and ladders so you can climb a ladder and send me sliding down a slide so I'll remember who you are and I'll recognize you and I shouldn't have, shouldn't have messed with you in the first place give me a fucking break you out of your goddamn mind Santa Claus <laughs> you're not that fucking big or smart <clears throat> so also Doug was oh, excuse me Santa Claus was overheard lamenting with Mr. Hyena that Hyungjin's repeated, Hyungjin's repeated praising of me in public was problematic for Doug. Like, it gave me too much energy so that he, he, he would never be able to get his hands on me if Hyungjin kept praising me. Yeah, yeah, I actually heard that one too. I, I logged that. I logged, I logged those things, Doug. I logged, oh, excuse me, Santa. Santa, I logged all those comments. I know exactly what you wanted. Exactly what you wanted. I know where the lust comes from too. You probably wouldn't even diagnose that you're under lust. But anyway, I've seen it before. Uh, Santa Claus is also also presumed to kick people, Chris and Quinn, out of the church for having the nerve to assert that they were citizens of Chunnogook after a church official, Tim, said that there was no Chunnogook. So she was openly defying Tim and, and Lourdes who said that they were not citizens. And for the crime of openly defying the church leadership, Doug says to her, there's the door. This is a favorite catchphrase of Doug. Okay, at that town hall meeting, the leader and his assistant, the leader of the World Mission Department and his assistant, both uh, asserted that they were not citizens of Channel Book, which means that the center of the entire, you know, uh, conversation, uh, global conversation or uh, ma uh, communication matrix of sanctuary is lacking in the central faith of the era of fourth Adam, okay? That Channel Book exists and that we are bona fide children, okay, and citizens by birth, okay? Not because the lines on a fucking map. Ah, so that means you're leading the entire organization. You know, there's a principle in business um, that personnel is policy. No matter what you say, if you hire somebody in a pivotal position, in other words, the personnel you hire is your politics. Whatever it is that they believe, that's what your politics is going to be. So by hiring uh, this guy and his assistant, people who don't believe that they're citizens of Channel Gook, then non Channel Gookness is going to be the central policy of people who are uh, using your uh, communication apparatus, your global communication uh, uh, apparatus. Okay, 60. The Constitution itself asserts the idea that the kingdom doesn't exist. I already talked about that. It says that the, the biblical kingdom does not yet exist. And then they have the nerve to say that the, the, the document is immutable. Therefore, because it's immutable, it will always assert that the that channel group does not yet exist. So they place the kingdom in the minds of people who believe in the Constitution in a perpetual state of not existing yet, which is a very tricky, deceptive thing that Satan has done through this document, okay? Um, and um, this actually spiritually panned out the, the same way. The reason why the whole court thing panned out the way that it did is because it's this, this spirit of suspending the rights of citizens is baked into the Constitution. But I had to go through that shit to find out. Because I actually believed in the Constitution. That's why I used it twice. But I had to figure out, why the hell is there such a spirit of frustration, frustrating the citizen in and around this whole case? It's not just Lourdes, for God's sakes. It's not just Lourdes. So I, 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 I realized, me and a few friends of mine, that the Constitution is actually laughable because it asserts that the kingdom, which Father created in 2001, hasn't been created because the kingdom 
has material underpinnings, which Father said the kingdom does not have material underpinnings. Its underpinning is the blessed family. So, um, by changing the um, the uh, the prerequisites of the kingdom, they've made an argument and deceived everyone into thinking that the kingdom isn't here. And I I defy that. I defy that because I'm supposed to. <laughs> I'm supposed to. And you are you you fucking lucky that I, I that I defy it because everybody would be signing off as citizens of channel Cook, which is a big deception deception that satan would just love that we all use our power as 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 children of god to ignore the current reality of channel Cook. he couldn't do it himself he can only do it by deceiving the people with real power which is us into thinking that our kingdom doesn't exist yet that's what the so-called constitution does and in practice that's what it did so 61 tim insisted on being materialist about channel Cook. Okay, he said that Channel Gook is not going to exist until we have lines on a map or we have two states that uh, are in agreement to use the Constitution. Hyungjin and Yuna accused me of attempting to create a splinter group. I'm, I'm assuming that they followed uh, Doug's uh, opinion here when they told me that I was going to start a splinter group because if Doug had earlier called me John Walker, then where the hell does this splinter group shit come from? So what happened was because we were trying to appease Tim, a few of us were, were, were kicking around the idea of creating an alternate, you know, a uh, church organization or a state so that we could say we have two ecclesiastic bodies that comprise two separate states so that we could actually enact uh, or ratify or activate the Chernobyl Constitution. Why? Because it was frustrating. The The use of it was frustrated by everything that I mentioned earlier. The claim that Chernobyl doesn't exist and all this kind of stuff. So that maneuver, trying to create an, a second ecclesiastic organization, by the way, Cook and him said that we should go out and start churches back in June. but. Um, if Doug thinks that by starting another church, or if Hyungjin thinks that starting another church is uh, creating a splinter group, then Cookson back in June of 2017 was wrong to tell everybody to go start different churches because they would have been seen as splinter organizations. Can't make this shit up. Too much desire, too much shooting from the hip, and not enough thinking. Um, 63. Actually, Hyungjin was offended uh, that I was going to create a, uh, uh, a splinter group or so she said. She was offended. So offended by me um, putting uh, Citizens Covenant on the door of the church, which was to counter Tim, saying that, you know, Tim said that Channel Cook didn't exist, so a few of us drafted up a, a very short three-paragraph document saying that Channel Cook exists, and Father's the central person of the tree of life, and uh, um, the divine principle is the central word, you know, uh, and that we believe in those things. But this was offensive to Yun and him, and it was so offensive that she um, considered backing out of a matching agreement between our children because I put three assertions on the door of the church. Now that was the anniversary, of the 500 year anniversary of Martin Luther. And yeah, I was, I was definitely defiant. And I told her, I said, I'm defiant against uh, Tim's idea that the kingdom's not here. Of course, I'm defying that. And it's good for me to defy that. And you shouldn't punish me for being defiant. <laughs> you shouldn't be offended that I'm defiant over something that's unprincipled. But she was, and that's uh, reason number 63. 64, yeah, the fact that, you know, Yun and him thought that I'm going to create a splinter group and that any splinter group like Utopia Moon was unfit to be married to, you know, her kids. So in other words, you know, I don't think about politics when I think about matching my kids. I think about the highest joy being reached because that's the place where, you know, first love is the combination of a parent's love, Father said, and it's Cheju Island talks. Uh, first love is the moment the kids realize that that the, the love intended between Adam and Eve uh, was in the, the intention of the parents. So the parents have then succeeded in giving the greatest gift when the kids realize what it is that they've received. So I try to raise my kids to receive um, the, the match from the parents, from my couple and, and the other couple, as the greatest gift that, that they'll ever receive. And it's important to know that you're loved and how much you're loved because it liberates you. This is why Paul said, we love because he first loved us, okay? If your children's emotional bank account is to be as full as it possibly can be, they have to understand the thing of highest value is the son or daughter that they received in the blessing from the other family. And th th this is where my head is at. I'm not thinking about freaking politics. And when I mentioned this to Young Jin, he said that it was a prayer. And for a moment, um, they suspended Young Jin overrid Young Jin and you know, suspended this idea that I'm on suspension and shit. It's ridiculous. But the fact that her political desires and passions were so strong that it was going to invade something as precious and original as, you know, the magic. I mean, because I teach my children 
the ideal of, of why there is a matching and why parents are participating. Not just participating, they're actively trying to exercise the opportunity to give. The greatest act of giving that they ever will ever encounter is to give the thing that you have that's the most valuable to you, which is your child. I'm going to give this child to this other family. So the, act, the fact that she would let politics get in there, you can spin it whatever way you want, and I know you will. Oh, Jamal, you just don't understand, and all this kind of stuff that, you know, but honestly speaking, that shit hurt. That shit hurt my daughter. Because if I talk this way about the blessing, she definitely expected that you guys value it in, in the same way, okay? And so if you give her bullshit excuses as to why other things were more important, okay, <laughs> You don't worry about my daughter because I can explain to my daughter exactly why people make decisions like that. Why they have political lust to that degree, okay? To the point where you would even place the central tradition of love of the entire cosmos in a secondary or tertiary position behind your politics. Um, so, 65. Yana was willing to allow politics to invade that uh, central heart. Uh, 64 was threatened to hold the matching. Both of those two things, internal and external, were egregious. 66, Shang was so dominated by his brother's desire to regulate me through Doug and through Jim and Tim. Um, he basically said the reason why he, he wanted to back out of the matching was because of coaching him and because of his wife. I don't think that at the time he wanted to himself, but he was up against the will of his brother. Now, who's the fucking subject? Okay, who's the fucking subject? When you can't exert what you want, you know, he even told me, that he argued with the entire central staff. You know, I call them the seven fucking dwarves. And he said, yeah, but Jamal's really good with teaching kids. Yeah, Jamal's really good with um, um, uh, teaching about absolute sex. And he told me that they didn't care. And I'm like, so what? One, it's, Hyung Jin's son is not their son, okay? It's not their business. Who gives a fuck that they don't care? Who gives a fuck that they're so small-minded and so stuck in the restoration era that they can't measure anything else outside? They can't even see heaven. They can't see how important absolute sex is. They can't see it. Who gives a fuck that they can't see it? But the fact that Hyung Jin was subdued one way or the other by the fact that they can't see means that, you know, he's forfeiting his subjectivity because they, to their stupidity. Their lack of being able to understand is stopping him. I've been guilty of that because the older church members, there's a lot of stuff about the new age you don't get. And I had to stop using it as an excuse. I'm the one that's supposed to be going out, giving the blessing, teaching people, uh, blessing my tribe, like Father said, blessing my children, exerting my authority as a tribal messiah, and I'm not because you guys don't think that I should because you haven't figured that shit out yet because you want to be stuck in the old era and you don't want me liberated to my conscience and to uh, my messiahship. You know, so who gives a fuck that, they, that, that, that these people who are steeped in the old tradition read the last two, three pages of sec, uh, chapter three? Who gives a fuck that these people steeped in the old tradition don't get it? All right. Hyung Jin presumed to have power over citizens and channel good in the era of conscience. So when I tried to tell Hyung Jin what Jim had done, what Richard had done, what Tim had done, he took offense. And he tried to order me to issue a, a, a confession. So he presumed to have power over me when Father said that he has a, a position peripheral to blessed families. Okay, it's Cook Jin's concept that Hyung Jin is above us. Hyung Jin is not true father he is a place where when we want to make an offering to true father we can lay it at the feet of him and him but that means that we're the subject of the offering that is actually our heart that is in the subject position of giving to try to honor father who is not here bodily anymore that's why i've always called him and him a walking tabernacle if he would submit himself god bless him that people would have a place to come to on earth to set an earthly condition vitality elements of doing something nice for true father who is not here on earth anymore all of that does not mean that him gets to tell us what to do if Hyung Jin gets to tell us what to do, then what happened to freedom? See? So, but he presumed that uh, to, to have power over citizens. Um, 68. Accused me of being... Oh, he accused me when he eventually dissolved the matching. He blamed it on me. That I failed to obey him. If you want to... If you want to... Well, no. Whether you believe it or not, that's what he did. He, um, you know, he didn't want to take responsibility by saying, I don't want to match our kids anymore. Which I think would have been a more manly thing to do. Is hey Jamal, I just don't want to do it anymore. But he's got to turn around and saddle me with some blame that has no, <laughs> no fucking weight to it, you know? Because the context was obedience and assumed obedience. I, I, I'm not. I told him I'm like I'm not supposed to obey you, okay? So, um, I think he got that idea from coaching him. So, um, 
69. Young gentleman is powerless in dealing with his brother and his wife's political passions. That's obvious because he eventually broke that blessing or that matching agreement uh, to appease them. And that's my opinion. And I don't mind it. That's my opinion. <clears throat> About the Constitution now. The Constitution teaches that a new teaching, the Constitution itself, is necessary in order to improve uh, on Father's Constitution or counter or replace Hatcha Han's Constitution. Okay? However, Reverend Moon stated in November 15th, 2001, there is no need or necessity for any additional or newly invented or newfangled constitutions to be issued. Okay? When he said this, there will be laws. There will be laws for the kingdom of heaven. Where is the law? All the things I have spoken to you so, so far, all the things I have guided our church with will replace all nations' constitutions. Well, I don't think they understand that the idea that the constitution itself is not completely a tangible thing. If you want to go outside of the three articles that Father created and you want to fine-tune people's understanding of it, it will be a matter of conscience. It's not, uh, it's not tangible. It is something that will... It's an emergent thing. It's an emergent quality that comes out of fourth atomism, people uh, who receive their inheritance. As people receive their inheritance and they know what's most, what the kingdom is based on, you know I mean? first love, absolute sex, the maintenance of the four position foundation is the most precious nexus of man, woman, God, and children. Um, the garden. Uh, people wanting to protect that thing which is most important and powerful over the lives of people becomes as a living constitution, a collective awareness and desire to protect that becomes a living constitution. We just have to maintain the three articles. So the constitution is not actually, it's, some, it's an emergent uh, phenomenon uh, based on our faith in the realm of fourth Adam. Um, 71, sanctuary leadership is misleading people about the matter of the kingdom starting in spirit. Okay, the kingdom starts with spiritual realization. It starts in faith that since this is the era of fourth Adam, it actually starts with us believing, understanding, and knowing that we were rightfully born. Otherwise, Father failed to save any of us. Now, if you would confess that you are fully saved, that means you are fully son. You are fully daughter. It is your faith that you are fully son or fully daughter. Upon that reality, the kingdom comes about. Okay, but uh, Sanctuary, through Tim Elder, who wrote two essays on the matter, uh, said that the kingdom's going to come when there's lines on a map and two states are in agreement to uh, use the, general, the United States General Bill Constitution. The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed. Luke 17:20. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Luke 17:21, 23 through 23. Reverend Moon teaches the kingdom of heaven will come without signs to be observed. However, it's a contra. Hmm. So, if the kingdom of heaven is not going to be coming with signs to be observed, how can the kingdom of heaven be based on lines on a fucking map? Do you understand that? Father, in January 26. Uh, 2002, created a nation called Chajuguk and said that Chajuguk must precede Chanuguk. And what is Chajuguk? Chajuguk is an intangible matter. It is the matter of us, the believers, understanding that we are liberated and autonomous. Now, if there's something working against or offended by our autonomy and liberation, that would have to be Satan. But it's very easy for each one of us to become Satan in that sense because if we have some delusion of grandeur wherein we have to make a pyramid and make everybody subservient to our pyramid then we run against we run counter to um, <clears throat> the age of autonomy or we can be tempted into it so very quickly our own brothers and sisters through delusions of grandeur or having chapter 5 problems like that's what I call it, chapter 5 problem you get the revelation you're the Lord and you try to lord over everybody else necessarily diminishing their autonomy so how can channel come about in an environment where people are discouraged by elitists into forfeiting their autonomy um, you know for, for the sake of these organizations to pad the egos of these people who are taking the you are the Lord revelation the wrong way so look I just laid out for you how and why our own brothers and sisters can become Satan okay if you understand this you understand what the heck happened to Hak Jahan what the heck happened to Hyung Jin? What, hap what the heck happened to, happens to true children? What the heck happens to church presidents who, who flip on a dime and, and creates, uh, you know, uh, notions that they are replacing father, um, including H1, okay? These are all everybody dealing with the, wrestling with the mindset of the angel who is telling them from within 
that their their own majesty is to be served when they get the revelation that they are the Lord. And everyone should be getting this revelation as you realize that you are an inheritor. Okay. So uh, that's not being taught or navigated well. Okay. Uh, but when it is navigated well, it would constitute a spiritual state within each individual person which congeals into Chanel Guk. Chanel Guk is an emergent reality which comes from people in individually attaining and upholding this uh, inherited sense of autonomy that is an attribute of their uh, sonship or daughtership. It's a part of their identity. Human beings were meant to be free, but we grow into understanding that we're meant to be free. Okay? Chajukuk. Go ahead, read about it. January 26, 2002. So the kingdom is not going to come about because we protect a border around a piece of land. Okay? But Sanctuary is teaching that via Tim Elder. Um, Father said, what use is it to do politics? We are not people who need politics to survive. People come to know our strength because we skillfully push that aside. All that is left is an empty tin can. What else did Father say? Well, the DP says that uh, the three great blessings are fulfilled when the whole creation, including human beings, creates a four-position foundation with God as the center. This is the kingdom of heaven. So it is a matter of creating a four-position foundation. That four-position foundation is not related to lines on the map or the signing of a political um, uh, pact between two states. Yet, Tim Elder teaches that, and he goes uncorrected. There is no transparency about him as public official being corrected on that. So the appearances are that the leadership of Sanctuary are okay with him thinking and propagating that, that type of thinking. So reason number 72. Because the Sanctuary Constitution claims the Kingdom of Heaven is a future political state directly contradicting the, um, the divine principle. Okay, it, it directly, directly contradicts the three blessings. The divine principle says that the Kingdom of Heaven was at hand. It was, in the, it was alive in the hearts of the people that were following Jesus. Um, the divine principle says that the three great blessings are, and the creation of the four position foundation with God at the center will create the kingdom of heaven. Okay? So sanctuary teaches that this is going to happen in the future when two states have a uh, contract with one another. Um, Father said in the 26th of January 2002, he said, he said, here today, the 26th, uh, in the flow of your providence, God, ideal realm of Chano Guk transcends all earthly nations. So if it's a political pact between two nations or between two states, how can it transcend all nations? It's not, it's not tangible. And they're not giving respect to the intangible reality. Um, and they were incapable of guiding Lotus Schwartz to do her responsibility and uh, stand as a citizen of Chano Guk when it was necessary. And so as far as their performance is concerned, their entire organization was devoid of any recourse in the matter. And so when uh, Lord Schwartz says that she's not a citizen, nobody corrects her. Now, have a bunch of Lord Schwartz walk Schwartzes walking around who say they're not a citizen, and then what happens to your organization? Your organization of people who are not citizens. So then what happens to Channel Gook? How can Ch Channel Gook, which is meant to be emergent from Chaju Gook, uh, come about anywhere near your organization when people who feel like citizens are chastised and people who feel like they are not citizens are protected and not even corrected especially if they're public officials and that's their public stance there's no apparatus to correct or trans show transparency to show that the matter was addressed because this purpose of the person's a public official 74 teaches a materially rooted kingdom suggesting that the kingdom of heaven begins if two or more political entities apply and accept political contract law again uh, this goes counter to uh, father saying where does life in the kingdom of heaven begin it begins from the family and nowhere else the kingdom of heaven is a dimensionally expanded version of the family and so does not go beyond the realm of the family Chun Sung Young page 1295 okay um, additionally uh, Reverend Moon said from where is the kingdom of heaven realized it is realized uh, from our families Okay, so I backed away from this entity, which is unclear about these things, to, you know, support my own children uh, so that they wouldn't get swept away in this confusion. Number 75, sanctuary supporters and or family fed supporters or many good church, they're, they're good people, but they feel the need to create church as if church 
uh, is the center of the creation of the kingdom. But Father didn't say that the church was going to expand into the kingdom. He said family would expand into the kingdom. Church is um, related to religion, synagogues, mosques, those types of things are all attached to, logically attached to religion. And religion, which means reconnect, is only a reality because of the fall. So in the original dynamics between God and human beings, what generates, why be offended that family generates the kingdom? You, f you so much love the things, the spiritual elements that you get from church and or organizations I mentioned what those things are before, like climbing ladders and edible, getting you know patted on the head and everything that goes, all the joy that goes along, angelic joy that goes along with climbing organizations. You want to expand to the world level. In other words, you want to turn the world into a big angelic world, uh, angelic structure. Okay, so you should be stopped, no matter how much passion you feel for it. Okay, you should be stopped because God's glory is that His original institution, the family, is the reason why the kingdom is created. Okay, you're the one that should surrender to God. Okay. Not me surrendering to you. You can get the fuck out of here with that. That's why I'm not chilling out with you guys, okay? I, I love you, but you, you, you know, you're wrapped up in a lot of confusion. Okay, sanctuary beguiles blessed family members into suspending the assertion. Okay, so you should be asserting, everyone should be asserting their rights. It's a part of the realization that, you know, when Father talks about fourth Adam, the realm of fourth Adam, that's you. You're, de you're descended from the third Adam, okay? Um, According to three kingships, you're actually the third king because 28 or 28 times Father mentions in the Chancellor Young that the first king is God, the second king is true parents, and the third king is you. This is you having a realization about who you are in the providential arc. Okay? You're the culmination of, of human history, not the constitution. Okay? And you don't grasp who you are, and that's the only thing uh, that could stop Satan, is the sons and daughters appearing. Okay? And they don't appear just because they got blessed, they appear because they start to hold on to what they were given. Okay? That's not happening. That conversation is discouraged. If you started to be like me and act like you know you're free, maybe you have a, a, a Santa Claus come after you and accuse you of being John Walker. You see how that works? Do you see how that works? So, um, <laughs> so in other words, you watch, somebody, you watch them take shots at me and you don't want to copy me. You, you, you don't want to go down the path that I went. So in that way, I mean, who's that helping? The, the kingdom will come out and the sons and daughters start to emerge, right? Taking a stand for the, uh, the family and the four position foundation autonomously. Yet you have people who are offended that they cannot control autonomous people like me. They actually have a problem. And if Young Jinin were to praise you like for your autonomy and the way you wear it, there are people in sanctuary who would say it's problematic that Young Jinin praises you all the time because they can't get a, a, a foothold in and uh, start to manipulate and control you as long as Young Jinin is lifting you up, right? This is the type of battle that we're dealing with. Either we're free or we're in a structure and not free. We're bound by, by structure. And people who are in the upper tiers they enjoy a different reality than the people who are in the lower tiers. Cook Jin, or Justin, will have a new providentially ro uh, ordained role, according to the Constitution, a role that True Father did not create. You cannot find it uh, in that Chan Sang Gyeong, or in a divine principle, an eternal position called Inspector General. It's totally made up. And it's, 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 uh, it's an addition. It's outside of the realm of the teaching of True Parents. It's a flight of fancy of one guy who, I don't know, maybe he has self-importance issues. I have no idea. I think he's, I think he has, he's having a chapter 5 problem. Delusions of grandeur. 78. Then the authority of two parents is not to be hoarded by elites. Um, Injunim can give the blessing apparently. Uh, Young Jinim, H1, the true mother. And also father said that we all should bless people no matter what anybody says. Okay, we've inherited the, the serious position of true parents. These are his words that we've inherited the serious position of true parents. But you can't learn anything like that from elitists in organizations who are corral corralling us would be stars of heaven into necessarily like underlings. It's vampiric actually. Um, uh, Justin and Sean are out of their position. This is number 79. Okay. True father said Cain was born in the position of Satan. True father said that Cain must make Abel submit to him. Cain always tries to make Abel submit to him. Okay. So Cain is the elder brother was born in the position of Satan while Abel was born in Adam's position, representing the side of God. These are Father's words. And Cain always claims that Abel must submit to him. Now, if Hyung Jin Im couldn't enact his own policies and uh, reprimand his own staff because Cook Jin wouldn't let him, then you do the math. I'm going to move on. 80. 
Red Moon only canonized the divine principle, uh, but Cookton wants to treat the OSDP like it's central. The OSDP is not one of the eight textbooks. No matter how much Father seemed to uh, be interested in it, the process to canonize it was not completed. And um, so there. I mean, that's got to, we've got to actually deal with reality the way that reality is. Okay, you can't lift the OSDP up. Um, you know, it's incomplete uh, in its uh, representation, which leaves holes for embellishment, which is why I think it's maybe attractive to people who like to make up shit. Okay, 81. The three kingships is misrepresented in the church. I told you two times already. The three kingships is true, uh, is God, true parents, and you, yourself. This has to do with you actually really breaking Satan's word in your head about who you are. That's, that's necessary because you have to get past that. See, this is why Jesus could succeed in the three temptations. But you too also must succeed in the three temptations by getting past this issue, this problem about who you are. Three kingships has to do with the identity of and, and the rights of the heirs of heaven, which you are one. It is not about, you know, a God, God, you know, love Father, love Hyunjin, love Shinju. But if um, you are to forego the experience of three great kingships because you're mistakenly focused on Shinjun or Hyunjin, that's tragic, actually. That's tragic. I mean, how do you propose to replace the three great kingship experience if you've uh, diverted people away from what its true meaning? That's, that's irresponsible. It's our pledge in the family pledge to uh, you know develop three great kingships which means to develop a sense of fa the father's victory in having bore us that he, he actually gained victory actually I'm actually born properly he, he he did a good job if I doubt who I am then I'm not doing my five percent to help father create a son out, out of the raw materials that was formerly you know my, my, my former self so that's 81 three great kingships three kingships are misrepresented uh, 82 cook Chin puts forth the idea that the kingship of Hyungjin Moon, which which differs from the principle allows, is unsupported by True Father's words. Okay, Hyungjin Im is the king that Kukjin Im says that Hyungjin is, <clears throat> is not supported by principle. In other words, the principle doesn't allow Adam to be a classic fallen world king. Adam has to wield his authority sexually. He turns on and off the spigot at his sexual organ. He has lordship and rulership over us through gay or nay about whether or not he's going to get into that vagina if he's going to get into that vagina and create you that's his power because he did that you are a descendant with rights his relationship to you that he is your progenitor is what affords you rights and that's why the bible says that king of kings lord of lords is written on his thigh okay because he is king in that he gives you rights through heredity because god before even adam was created ordained that all the sons that and daughters that Adam would have would get the rights of sons and daughters. Okay, so a classic fallen world king doesn't respect his subjects like uh, true children of heaven. True children of heaven are free. So yeah, you may be my dad, but you actually don't get to tell me what to do. Even God didn't force Adam. He left him within a realm of, of his own freedom. Okay. <clears throat> and, you know, God was not offended by Adam's freedom. He may have been biting his nails, worried that Adam might misuse his freedom, but he wasn't offended by the notion that, because he had created that freedom. That freedom was necessary. Okay, 83. Hyungjin remains monetarily dependent on Cain and the outdated restoration age structure known as church. Okay, <clears throat> Hyungjin is dependent financially on Kukjin and or the church. If anything, you know, were to destabilize the church, it threatens Hyungjin. Uh, I would assume his wife would have a hard time uh, remaining object partner. I didn't say she would fail at it, but she'd have a hard time because most women would when the money's disappearing. Um, also, with uh, you know, in the Lord position over Hyung Jin Im's money is Kuk Jin Im. This is yet another way in which Hyung Jin Im should seek. I used to like it when he was bushcrafting because it thumbed his no, his, his, his thumbed his uh, nose at uh, the whole idea of uh, creature comforts controlling him. I like that. When he moved into the palace, it started to diminish. So the power of his brother's money and the church money, I think, grew when he stopped bushcrafting. Eighty-five. The sanctuary church has transparency issues. You know, I don't know who's on the board of directors. Do you? 
but that's small. Um, how much power does Cookson actually have? You know, I mean, like, how many, how many operations does he actually have final say so? Because you would assume that Hyunjin has a reasonable amount for his title, but if Hyunjin's always deferring to Cookson and the uh, uh, central staff is always um, attributing, you know, decisions to Cookson wants this and Cookson wants that which is the case then um, okay sanctuary has transparency issues um, cooking him likes his secrecy um, he likes uh, he, he's fascinated with secret societies um, uh, you know um, you know he's very heavy, heavy heavily invested in loyalty you know, I'm not heavily invested in, in loyalty because I don't need people to help me uh, hide shit, okay? Uh, Cookson apparently needs people to help him hide shit. And, uh, you know, he, he'll he have people in bondage. I know it's for a fact. Uh, he'll have people in bondage to, uh, you know, promises, okay? That's that's anti-freedom right there. If you're going to bind your brother or sister, you know, in like like loyalty promises and shit like that, you know, um, you got issues because if you loved your brother or sister, you wouldn't want to bind them in like secrecy gag orders and shit like that. You know, uh, you wouldn't send out your operatives, Mrs. Claus and everybody to, just to make sure that, you know, I'm not going to get on the Internet and talk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I know for a fact that they have transparency issues. Uh, right, sanctuary. 86. Justin feels the need to keep a secret organization, prostitutes and assassins. Why? He said that the kingdom needs this type of clandestine organizations, prostitutes, and assassins. Father never said that about the kingdom. Cookson had made that up. It's all on him. If you want to like figure out what it is about his character that has him thinking this way, fine. Uh, you know, when I first encountered it, I was like, you know, entertained by it. Uh, I wanted to see how far it went. You know, maybe it was just, you know, where I grew up, everybody was a character. But then you get to really know them later on. But uh, after years, after after being with around Cookson for a couple of years, he never turns that shit off. He never turns that shit off. And, um, you know, he actually really thinks this shit. Okay, not as not as a joke. He's like, he comes up with another layer of drama to build into his organizations. And uh, so, I don't know. It's, it's, it's quite unnecessary to me. I, I, I never heard one one uh, attempt on Father's life, actually. I don't even know why they had bodyguards around Father. I don't, I don't, I don't see the heat. Um, why, uh, excuse me, 87. Hyung Jin stated in early 2017 in the King's Report broadcast that he is the Pope, okay, which means the uh, representative or the, the vicar of Christ, okay. He's a substitute for Christ. Hyung Jin is not a substitute, okay. Um, if you want to say that he can represent Father in Father's organization, sure. But listen, part of my identity is to say that I descended from Adam, okay. Adam cannot be a continuum or, you know, a principle. Adam has to be a person. And Adam lived his life and went to the spirit world. Like any normal human being should live their life and go to the spirit world. Adam cannot be, uh, you know, multiple people in the ideal. If there was no fall, there wouldn't be a succession of Adams and whatnot. So I did not descend from Hyunjinim. My position, my identity is lateral to Hyunjinim in that we are both brothers descended from father. That's father's wishes. It's father who wishes it to be that way. Okay, it's father who wishes it to be that way. Okay, and um, so, you know, the idea that, you know, I mean, it's just too sloppy to, to say that, you know, Hyung Jin represents father and not identify what that actually means according to the, its proper principle limits. Because I can't look at Hyung Jin as if he gave birth to me. He could be responsible for my father's uh, position, his effects, or his business, okay, his projects, even. Okay, a father can leave things to the son, but he cannot make the son as a father over the other children because he can he can say y y y you were passing a message onto my children, but even if the message comes from directly from the father, if the father is talking to his grown children, he has to respect. I'm talking about the kingdom of heaven. He has to respect that his kids have say so in the matter. They have free will. So my point is this: you know, um, the greatness of Adam is that he was a real person in all that that means. He lived, made choices that gave birth to us as descendants, and then he completed his path as a human being on earth. 
and gave up the body like all of us do. In other words, he's a normal person. Our father's a normal person. And by uplifting the normalcy of our father Adam, it uplifts the normalcy of all of us. All, actually, we are divinely normal. Okay? If Adam, Adam's normal life is insufficient, okay, then, okay, then you just created a two-tier system where, you know, some people get to actually be more special than others. The only special entity is the beginning entity. Father said that Adam and Eve's course was more difficult than subsequent generations because they had to do it the first. Young Jim doesn't have the burden of being the first to figure it all out. Father did that. That's my father. That's his father. Young Jim's not my father. He can just represent my father in some legal way or in an organization or in this kind of thing. Um, 88. Uh, Cook Jim has stated a number of times in the presence of visitors that the Freedom Society teaching is the conclusion of the divine principle. Bullshit. Bullshit. The divine principle concludes in the creation of blessed families. And blessed families go on and are responsible through their tribal messiahship to flesh out the kingdom of heaven. In other words, the divine principle has apportioned the responsibility at the end of history, not only on father as the first generation, but the subsequent generation. Okay, heaven can't have its way unless we are a certain way. Okay, us being that certain way is the end of the divine principle. In other words, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? That question is the end of divine principle, okay? In other words, I'm the end of divine principle. Not that I'm the Messiah, but I am born from the Messiah. I am fourth Adam. That is the end of divine principle. That's why Father opened up the era of fourth Adam before he went to the spirit world. Now, if you want to say that's arrogant, maybe you're a little bit of Satan. Blessed is he who takes no offense. If you take offense, if the old era takes offense at the new era, maybe they're in league with Satan. That's what we said about John the Baptist. He was offended by Jesus. Jesus said, blessed is he who takes no offense. Why are you offended by me being free? Why are you offended by me giving good news to people? Why are you offended by me uh, telling whatever part of my life story I want to tell? Why, why are you offended? Don't be offended. Just try to understand that a lot of what you guys are doing is, is outdated. It's of an old era, an old standard of goodness. And the new standard of goodness is eclipsing that. That's why nothing is going to come out of your church. Church is not going to grow. Family fair is not going to grow. No church is going to grow. Okay? What's going to grow, and I say this as a son of God, what's going to grow is what was growing in the Poconos, which I happen to be the elected pastor of. Uh, when you got here and didn't learn this lesson from what was going on in the Poconos and I happen to believe that you know that's what God why God brought you you guys here because what was going on in the Poconos was decentralized we actually clung to the divine principle we clung to the notion of family and didn't have somebody giving us a pat on the back telling us that, that that's what they wanted us to do okay and so you know Satan couldn't use what was going on in the Poconos to claim that the church was necessary to build it and that's what liberated God okay and that's why God liked the Poconos but you motherfuckers did not learn that Okay, and yeah, you know, maybe I have a problem because I, I so much don't want to be a big head. I, I just had, like, I don't know, infinite patience. But when I said I'm not a member of the church, you didn't understand the history of what had gone on in the Poconos. And you can't learn that from people who tried to turn the Chihuahua camp into a business. It wasn't a business. It was an expression of free people, Chajuguk. Okay, it was not, it was not, um, it was not an organization to seek, uh, you know, uh, uh, positioning, okay? So you have people in the Poconos who are into turning that into a business, and you, you have people in the Poconos who are interested in turning it into a pyramid structure so that they could climb it. And both of those people are in your administration. And the people who actually, uh, you know, held on to the true spirit of what was going on in the Poconos, th th those people aren't lustful enough to be driving themselves to be in your face all the time. Okay? They're not selling themselves to you all the time. Okay? You don't know what's going on here in the Poconos. You don't know why God brought you here. Uh, 89. Cookchin has stated, stated a number of times in the presence of visitors that the Constitution, not the blessing, is the greatest gift that God and true parents have. Bullshit. Bullshit. The Constitution is not a, is not a gift from God and true parents. It is the concoction of Cookchin and maybe Tim. Okay? Nobody has taken credit for who wrote that shit. Okay? That's, that's, that's one. How fucked up is that? Okay? That could be an extra point right there. Nobody takes responsibility. But 89. One time I said to Cookchin our spouse is the greatest gift that God and true parents have to give us. Because there's nothing more valuable than someone's son or daughter. There's so many different ways you could uh, flip that to look at that and affirm that. But this dude says, no, the Constitution is the greatest gift. That no. Let me put this in context. The Constitution is the expression of one person, presumably, I assume, coaching. But we all should be affirming our grasp of our freedom. Not all of us affirming one person's grasp of our freedom. 
which is what the Constitution proposition is. In other words, Cook and M wants to create a sense of importance that he drafted out for all of us, the parameters of all of our freedom. Now, that's something that all of us should be working out. This era, the Fourth Adam era, is for all of us to work out the Constitution, the collective freedom of of, of people of God emerges. It's an emergent reality because we take hold of our freedom, which is part of our inheritance. Okay, so the matter of working out your faith and working out the parameters of your freedom is something that all of us should work out and enjoy. And we all write the Constitution, maybe not in a pen, but we all work it out in our minds. So when Cook Chinim worked it out, he decided that he gets to stuff it down everybody's throat. Okay, and that feeds his sense of uh, or need of historical importance but God didn't write the Constitution father didn't write the Constitution father went the spirit world he gave us the last words of the true parents so that document does not qualify as a gift from true parents I don't care how much some kind of empty heart wants to be quote unquote more important you know I am the most important thing to God as a son and sonship is very repeatable reality It's not rare okay we all could and should be sons and that should satisfy us our position as spouse that we were given a spouse should satisfy us and then because we through those things know that we are loved then we can emotional bank account is supposed to we love the world but if you don't perceive the blessing as the most valuable thing that you've gotten you can't you're just going to always be empty because actually imagine getting the most valuable thing and still feeling empty that's what the hell can god do give you something more valuable than the most valuable thing get the fuck out of here so you've got to create other valuables okay you've got to you know create other things that are valuable like self-importance, like going down in history for having issued a document. But you don't even put your name on the fucking document. Cook Jin puts forth a two-tiered community where Hyung Jin is the only person of interest to God. Okay, so that necessitates elitism. If you have a model where there's important people and less important people, you just created tiers, stratification, and elitism. And you uh, do not honor the high value that the, 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 the title son or daughter of God actually is because there are some sons who are more son than sons you know there, there are more sons who are, there are sons who are more equal than others 91 young Jin puts forth a number of unprincipled mandates okay namely ro guns as rod of iron the principle says at least three times that the rod of iron is the word out of the Messiah's mouth okay so to chastise members for holding on to what father said is fucking disgusting it's disgusting let people have father don't be jealous of the relationship that people have with father let people have father and leave us the fuck alone okay now rod of iron is a nice way of i don't know talking about something but you've got to clarify and i think he has but not not before he fucking ripped me for trying to clarify that shit he fucking ripped me for speaking the truth what the fuck seriously what the fuck okay um, 92, Hyung Jin put forth the unprincipled idea that the uh, blessing was going to be stratified into four layers. I don't know. He went away to uh, Europe and uh, Nevada at a time where, you know, his, uh, his worker, Tim, uh, put forth this uh, levels thing, that there are levels to the blessing. Um, when I said that you can't stratify the blessing, you're going to go on your TV show and you're going to rip me for two fucking hours and tell my friend that, you know, you were, you, you were talking to me. You got fucking problems, man. You really got fucking problems. You're embarrassed. You're embarrassed. You're embarrassed for, uh, you're, I think you're embarrassed because when you don't know something, you'd be sitting there at the round table like this and Cook Jim's doing all the talking. You know what? It's probably because you don't know what the hell's being talked about at the table. I'm cool with that. I never needed a, a, a so-called representative or father who knew everything. But you're probably afraid of them people who will throw you under the fucking bus because you're supposed to know every fucking thing. And so you got to pretend for them so that they don't, you know, just totally discard you, you know. You still get manipulated anyway because people wind up realizing that you don't know and they start fucking with you anyway. Which is what I think is going on. Okay. I don't think you wanted to do to me all the shit that you did. It's because they knew that they could manipulate you because you had to uphold this idea that you, you know, you was on top of everything. You chose wrong though, I believe, man. I believe you really chose wrong, you know. 93 order. Okay. Young didn't put forth the unprincipled idea that he can order us around and he vigorously discouraged us from questioning him. Okay, that's what you did on February 3rd by discouraging me from questioning you. 
All right, I'm supposed to question you. You're a public figure. You said you issued something publicly, so but I'm supposed to question you privately, and somehow I violated our our relationship privately. That's not actually a thing, man. That's not actually a claim. Okay, you're public. You're you're talking in public, and so am I. You can't be offended that I'm talking in public about something that you issued in public. It's fucking ridiculous. Ninety-four. He repeated Hakcha Han's era when she introduced alterations to the blessing tradition. She introduced the odd shoe blessing by standing on stage by herself. Father never did that. And Hyung Jin paraded a gun and this fucking constitution, which basically solidifies that the kingdom of heaven is never going to come. Paraded that around as part of the blessing. The fuck? Anyway, 95, the last and final one. Hyung Jin, Kuk Jin, and Hakcha Han must all overcome the temptation that they are under. Wherein, at the top of the growth stage, they have each received the revelation that they are the Lord, and yet have overstepped their boundaries. None of them are a copy of True Father. They are only best suited for their niche, their niche, and as they assume greater authority than what the principle allows, they necessarily must devour the responsibility and freedoms and of, of others. In other words, they become more satanic and vampiric. They become agents taking away freedoms uh, from people. It's just that quick. Don't overstep your mandate or what the principle allows for your position. Um, Hak Jahan must recant the Family Federation issued constitution and repent for issuing it because it puts the power into a Supreme Council. And Hyung Jin and Kuk Jin must recant the United States Eternal Good Constitution, which teaches uh, that uh, the kingdom didn't come yet. They should repent for that. They also slipped in a Supreme Council effect by not telling us who wrote it, but insisting that it was immutable and presided over all of us and all creation. We didn't get to vote on that shit. So that's a backdoor Supreme Council effect, okay? So, um, there you go, 95. 95 reasons to leave sanctuary. Take care. Oh, by the way, I'll be back with, uh, you know, some clarifications and, um, more in-depth uh, discussion about these points.